Good evening, campers. I do hope the hype train has completely departed because I'm getting in on this. Daniel B. Green's Breach of Peace was a book I wasn't... I don't think I was ever meant to read. Yet yeah, we're going to review a book made by a popular YouTuber based on the R.C. Walden one. I can see the comments being an absolute great place to be. I don't watch the guy's videos, I'm not subscribed to him, but if you don't know who Daniel Green is, he is a prominent fantasy book reviewer. So why was I in the market for a £9.99 self-published book by a YouTuber, of which, one, I don't really know who he is. Well, we have thanks to the YouTube algorithm, because this video popped up on my home screen. I get asked about is, am I ready to be reviewed? Am I ready to see negative criticism, positive, what have you? I'm aware I didn't write the next Lord of the Rings. There are definite problems with it. If I could go through from start to finish again, I might, but I've also set deadlines for myself because I know it's the best I could do right now. At the same time though, I've improved from the experience. So I'll do even better for the next one. Hmm, that's an odd way to sell your book. Let's make something clear. Daniel, you were telling me you were selling a book to people that you don't think is that great. Do you think you maybe should have polished this book first? Now quote one of the main philosophers of our time, Imagine Dragons. Second thing, second, if you don't believe in your book, you should expect a reviewer like me to come along and drag this. And that is exactly what I am going to do. This book, Breach of Peace, is the prologue before Daniel Green's possible six book series that he has in his mind. Green's Bread and Butter is fantasy and one of the genres of literature that definitely leads into serializing. To name but a few authors we have Pratchett, Hobb, Le Guin, Sanderson and the most influential author on Green I would say is Robert Jordan with his The Wheel of Time series. The purpose of Breach of Peace is more so for green, I would say, rather than for us. This sets up his universe of deified cops and some shenanigans that are to beget. Why would I give the criticism that this is more for Daniel than it is for the reader? Because for us, this book could have been three pages long and given us everything that we needed to. However, Green has decided to stretch this out for a hundred pages. Within this novella, we're gonna be a fly on the wall observing a crime scene that Khalid, the woman, here is going to try and solve. I'm actually unsure of how to pronounce that name, but it's very similar to DJ Khaled, but it's not just another one, just this one character. And it's just this one book at the moment. It, did, it didn't need to exist. Khalid enters a scene that feels very much ripped out of the alienist, but nevertheless, we have the character who has personality. Well, she doesn't have personality. She just has a penchant for cigarettes and never knows that she has another one in her hand. A character trait extremely similar to Martin Amos's Money, where the character basically tells us that if he doesn't tell you that he's smoking, know that he's smoking. Green will tell you every single time when Cleed is surprised that she has a cigarette in her hand. The crime scene that Cleed is investigating is a good way not just to set up the scene, but for us to get used to some of the characters and we have the clear tension between some cops, we have the love interest, and then we have just just an opportunity for just like a really bad joke. Let it be known here, put it on the record, that the culprit of the worst attempt of trying to be funny that I have seen is the forgetting of Officer Smith's name, where Green spent way too many pages calling him Officer Shits. It starts on page 32. What's his name? Why do I want to call him Officer Shits? Officer Shits frowned at his hand and gave him a dirty look. Within the minute, Officer Shits returned with two lanterns and his partner. Chapman decided he could not keep referring to him as Officer Shits. And so does the reader. Green, so does the reader. You probably didn't notice something that utterly frustrated me within those four sentences that I read out to you. It's that this book is kind of like a game of chess. Because in chess, both players have to move something. They can't just sit there. The board can't stay 
static. All Green does is move his characters. Wait, why am I even explaining this metaphor? Surely you're not inept. Oh no, I'm stuck in a Daniel B. Green novel. The characters within this novel cannot simply say, state, or reply to something. They have to do something, and the majority of the word count is just characters raising eyebrows, giving each other side looks, putting their hand in their pocket, revealing a gun. I, I, oh, I hate this one. One of the characters does this to one of the other characters. Stop. Mr. Green, I come with empty arms telling you that your readers are apt. They have the aptitude and understanding to track three people having a conversation. You could just have the words. I don't need actions. I don't need said. I don't need all the names all the time. I can, I can do that. But the worst thing is about this, Mr. Green, is that your characters speak a lot. They just don't say anything. They don't say anything of value. Your characters are just telling me the scenes that have already just happened or are explaining the metaphors that I already know. Mr. Green, I come again with empty arms. I'm still in the same room. I'm still here with my empty arms. I think you wrote this to see how many words you could drag out of yourself. You know when people ask, how many books are too many books? At the moment, it's one and it's the it's the bloody prologue. Why on earth are people saying that it is on the internet? Oh wait, yeah, because they're subscribed to you. Oh wait, yeah, it's because they're mates and you've given them free copies. So there's a bit of bias there. This boy, this boy's outside of the circle. I'm gonna say exactly what it is. I'm not your target audience. And you can see from the books behind me that I don't read fantasy. But by gosh, all the tropes in fantasy Bear in mind, I don't read any, so I'm there for like the stereotypical view of it. It's all in here. And how dare you give me the climatic scene and then like absolutely like shoved down my throat pathetic fallacy that there's thunder and lightning and the rain's there. But don't worry about it. You won't forget it because the thunder will be booming in the background because you probably wouldn't be able to keep track of any of this, said Khalid. As she opens her umbrella to make sure her cigarette doesn't... Oh wait, she has a cigarette in her hand. It's not been the 15th time you've told me. This is a waste of money and you sold it to your audience. No Knowing that it wasn't great. And you know what? I don't like that. I don't like that. You have a large following, so we know that people were going to buy your book because of who you are. That's why people bought this book. But my real criticism is, having watched some of your videos, you have personality. You have something that engages people, yet within your writing, your personality is completely stripped back because I think you were trying to imitate and replicate popular things that happen in fantasy and therefore you have lost your own voice. To give another metaphor, you are basically following a tried and true recipe but you're not giving yourself any chance of creativity and innovation. But trust me, if you put a bit more time in your books and a bit more of you in your books, you will produce something a thousand times better to what Breach of Peace was, which is basically the, like, like the worst thing I've read this year. YouTube is in their books. I'm making a rod for my own back, aren't I? I'm aware that I read literary fiction and you read a lot of fantasy. And for some people, that's like red flags. That these two, these two can't mix and what I say is wrong because I don't understand the over of what fantasy has to say. But I know good writing when I see good writing. I've read enough books to be able to deduce what's good and what's not. And I, I promise you now, spend more time on your books rather than joking around with your audience. Actually produce something, the one you're proud of, and two, you actually think will knock the socks off of people. Breach of Peace, you get the coveted zero out of ten. A book that doesn't need to exist, you will get the exact same emotional impact if you google fantasy tropes and how does Arthur Conan Doyle vaguely produce a story? Huzzah! This is the result you get and now we get to look forward to possibly six books that could possibly be the equivalent of one book. Maybe two if I'm being optimistic. But Mr. Green, I'm gonna keep buying your books. I'm gonna keep reviewing them. Have a good day.